for justice. We're outnumbered, as you saw, Wounded Knee in 73, what happened. And you can see it all across uh, Indian land, everywhere around the globe, which is why we went uh, to Geneva, Switzerland. But after Wounded Knee in uh, 1975, in June of 1975, there was a shootout in uh, Pine Ridge, South Dakota, and uh, uh, on the Jumping Bull compound. And uh, the uh, FBI and the uh, law enforcement uh, came into the compound military style, and uh, they knew that the American Indian Movement was there in that area, having been called into that region by the elders because of the killings and the uh, shootings that were occurring during that time. In fact, from 1973 to 75 is what we refer to as the reign of terror, where uh, at least uh, 60 men and women were killed, assassinated, murdered, and their, uh, th those incidences have still been unaccounted for by the, the uh, uh, Justice Department. But there in June uh, 25, actually, of, uh, of uh, 1975, where that shootout occurred, there was three men in particular who were there and involved in the shootout that led to the killing of two FBI agents. And one of those people that was there uh, is Leonard Peltier. And as some of you know, Leonard Peltier has been in prison over 40 years and uh, for a crime he did not commit. And uh, the end result of his trial was aiding and abetting. And today it's well known that he did not do it. The Justice Department knows. So they're holding him for whatever reasons. And right now we've embarked on a major campaign uh, to seek his freedom. And we're not asking for a pardon from President Obama because he doesn't have anything to be pardoned for. He did not commit the crime of those two FBI agents. Uh, he is pleading a, for executive clemency. So that's what we'd like for people to learn and understand and to call the White House and to, uh, to seek his freedom as well. There's over 50 U.S. congressional people that have called for his release. Uh, uh, Desmond Tutu of South Africa has called for his release. Nelson Mandela had called uh, for his release. The Archbishop of Canterbury, just a, a lot of people. We received uh, 14 million letters from what was then called the Soviet Union. Uh, so they know more about Leonard Daltier than most people know about him here in this country. And so now we uh, are on a major effort. If you go to uh, Leonard's website, and that is all one word, who is Leonard Peltier dot I-N-F-O. That's who is Leonard Peltier dot I-N-F-O. You'll see that there's a campaign through his website, and it's the I Will campaign, that I will call the White House, I will sign the petition, I will seek his release. And uh, I have some information there at that model, uh, uh, that you see against the wall with all the other pictures. That model is Leonard Peltier uh, that was sculptured by Rigo 23. He's a well-known international uh, artist, sculpture, and uh, he proposed to us and sought our help to help him build a nine-foot bronze statue of Leonard Peltier. So that's what we're, uh, we're doing at this time. And, we appeal for your help and support uh, for, for his release. You know, we'd like to see him come home to see his, his kids, his grandkids, great-grandkids. Uh, he's told us he'd like to come to a powwow. That's one of the things that he wants to do, get his feet on the ground and rub it on the grass. In fact, uh, Rico 23 had that in mind from uh, that, that sculpture that he, that he did. Uh, of having Leonard Peltier barefooted, and as you see over there in the in the model, uh, his feet are on the ground. So that's what we'd like that uh, 
statute also uh, uh, to be placed at outside so he can also feel the, the four seasons so he can feel the sun and there will be snow on his shoulders and you know all that uh, uh, to commemorate him. We all know what happened to Geronimo, right? Geronimo died in prison. He died in prison after 25 years in there, after so many promises that he too would be released. And uh, you know, yet they they uh, they uh, showboat around with him, that, and then they place him back in prison, and they never let him out. That's not what we want to happen to Leonard Peltier. We consider Leonard Peltier a human rights defender. And that seems to be an international term now, more and more, of who the men and women are in our communities fighting for our rights, whether it's water, or the civil rights, or, or sacred sites, that, uh, or fighting against the oil pipelines, as we're hearing the fracking and the exile pipeline. Although he got, uh, Obama did not uh, agree with that exile pipeline, the Keystone, there are other pipelines being proposed and Indian people are at the front lines uh, holding that, uh, hold, trying to hold that up. So, you know, the struggle continues. Uh, last Saturday, uh, Lynn Foster, I don't know if you know Lynn Foster, but he's the uh, spiritual advisor uh, for Leonard Peltier. He went in Saturday uh, to visit with him and uh, tell him, you know, about what's going on and about this uh, project that we uh, that we have embarked on. So um, we're uh, appealing to you to uh, go to the uh, the, the uh, who is Leonard Peltier info website or uh, this flyer that I have here and it's posted over there is a website uh, to go to a petition. Uh, to the Obama and the White House to seek the release of Leonard Peltier through executive clemency. So, with that, my relatives, uh, time is up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.